welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video lesson i'll be solving different practice questions that cut across different topics in chemistry so let's start with the first practice question and it says zinc oxide is a or an is zinc oxide a basic oxide is zinc oxide an acidic oxide or is zinc oxide an amphoteric oxide or lastly is zinc oxide a neutral oxide now this must be noted it must be noted here that zinc oxide have the ability to behave like an acid or a base so there is an oxide that have these characteristics and it is regarded to be called the amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxides are oxides that can behave like an acid and also behave like a base that means they have dual property two property so this must be noted so zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide okay zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide we have other examples of oxides that are amphoteric oxides like the likes of this compound and it's called aluminium oxide not just aluminium oxide we have other oxides like tin oxide like for aluminium oxide the chemical formula for this oxide is al2o3 whereby for tin oxide it is sno so all of these are some common oxides that are amphoteric in nature alongside zinc oxide so this must be noted so moving over to the next question which is in the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid solutions what volume of 0 0.5 molar solution whenever we hear the word molar there is something that will come to our mind and that is called concentration will come to solve this question just follow closely so 0 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide would exactly neutralize 10 cm cube of 1.25 molar sulfuric acid now whenever i see questions like this my mind will go to a formula now this must be noted how did i know that i will use that formula i saw a word in this question and the word i saw was neutralization so this is a neutralization reaction between what an acid and a base to form salt and water so it is reaction between this is the base and as well this is the acid do you get so whenever i see questions under this aspect i will use a very important formula under quantitative analysis which a very important aspect is found which is called titration and the formula is simply this c a v a over c b v b is equal to n a over n b so this formula must be noted whenever we see questions under this aspect when you just see neutralize and you saw an acid and also a base you know that okay this is the formula i should use to solve the question so moving further the next step to take is to try to form a reaction because this question has a reaction it has a reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide some questions in the jam exam they can actually provide the reaction for you but in this case we were not given the reaction so we have to write the reaction and balance the reaction together so make sure you watch closely as i'm about doing that to solve this practice question it is very very easy okay guys moving further let us write the reaction it is a reaction between an acid which is h2so4 h2so4 is the sulfuric acid and it can also be called hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6 or tetraoxosulfate 6 acid okay reaction between sulfuric acid and a base called sodium hydroxide you already know that the product you are to get is salt and water but what type of salt is very easy when H2SO4 react with sodium hydroxide, I will get a salt. Okay, now there is a reason to how I'll get it, but 
most importantly as earlier said you'll be given the reaction most times in the exam and also it's actually easy to get you know constant practice makes perfect so the sort we are to get first is na2 so4 plus water which you already know to be what h2o so moving further what are we to do next to solve this question after writing the reaction we have to make sure that the reaction is balanced okay so looking at this reaction is not balanced why let's check together looking at hydrogen here how many hydrogen can we see here two how many this is the left hand side of the reaction and this is the right hand side of the reaction now balancing the reaction is making sure that both sides are equal in numbers of atoms let's check together for hydrogen we have two here for this side we have one so two plus that one what are we having three hydrogen atoms in the left hand side let's check the right hand side to see if hydrogen is three so if hydrogen is not three we'll know that it's not balanced so we try to balance it together so for hydrogen here we have just two hydrogen atoms meaning that the reaction is not balanced so we'll come to that so that's for that class so here is three here is two let's check for other like sulfur sulfur here is one sulfur here is one so sulfur is balanced let's check for oxygen oxygen here is four and also oxygen here is one so four plus one that is five but let's check for oxygen here oxygen here is four oxygen is one so oxygen is five but let's progress and lastly let's check for sodium sodium here is one and sodium here is two so sodium is not balanced so let's try to balance this reaction together so the first we have to work towards is balancing hydrogen hydrogen here was two hydrogen here was one so here in all together hydrogen here is three here hydrogen here is two so what do you think i should do to make sure hydrogen is balanced this is what i want to do if i want to make sure hydrogen is balanced i'll put two in the front of naoh meaning that these two we have set everything it will affect sodium it will affect oxygen and affect hydrogen do you understand so we have two hydrogen here and also we have two hydrogen here making hydrogen at the left hand side to be four but hydrogen here already is two so what do you think i should do to make sure hydrogen is balanced as well i'm going to also put two in front of water so two is affecting hydrogen and two is affecting oxygen so two times this two here what's that now four so you can see now that hydrogen in both sides are four atoms they are both balanced so the next thing we want to check for is checking for um sulfur sulfur already here is one sulfur is one oxygen here is four oxygen here as well becomes two so two two we've gotten now plus four we've gotten before that's six in total let's check for the oxygen here here is four and this two is still affecting oh so here is two here is four as well here is six do you understand so oxygen here is six oxygen here is six so it is balanced let's check for sodium sodium here is two because two is affecting it and sodium here is two as well so you can see that sodium is balanced so in general this reaction is now balanced so what do we do next very easy let me quickly tell you what each of the parameters mean in this formula ca here means concentration of acid c means concentration a means acid b means base so c a concentration of acid v a volume of acid c b concentration of base v b volume of base is equal to n a over n b what's n a n a is number of moles of acid what's n b number of moles of base so it's very easy let's read the question carefully they now said that in the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid which we've done now what volume of 0.5 molar i told you that molar has to do with concentration so 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide so with this class what becomes the concentration of base because that's what they give to us first so concentration of base becomes 0.5 they said it's 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is the base okay what volume what volume of 0 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide meaning that they are acting not to get the volume of base do you understand what volume of this is the base 
what volume let's say this one was not here what volume of this is the base so they asking us to get vb that's what they're asking us to get so what becomes ca and what becomes va very easy let's get them together that would exactly neutralize 10 cm cube of 1.25 molar sulfuric acid so what's the volume of acid 10 cm cube and what's the concentration of acid 1.25 molar do you understand it's actually very easy now it's very easy they've given us neutralized 10 cm cube of 1.25 molar sulfuric acid so with all of this what are we asked to get volume of base vb so making this subject cross multiply vb will not be equal to will time slow we see we're making this subject you times everything before you divide by these two guys so it's going to be ca i believe you understand what i'm talking about so ca va and b divided by cb N A. So let's get our answer together. What becomes the what becomes the concentration of acid? Concentration of acid is one point two five times volume of acid is ten times number of moles of base. This is the base. This is the acid. What's the number of moles of base? What's standing in front of the base? Two moles. So number of moles of base becomes two divided by what's the concentration of base? 0 0.5 times what's the number of moles of acid what's standing in front of acid nothing so we take it to be invisible one do you understand so it's going to be one so what becomes the vb volume of base let's press our calculator to see if we get the answer definitely we have to get the answer it's very very easy simply say 1.25 times 10 times 2 divided by 0 0.5 times 1 so the answer we got is option d which is 50 centimeter cube okay so 50 centimeter cube is the volume of the base so here it becomes 50 cm cube very easy not difficult at all for instance they are asking you to get the volume of acid you still do the same thing cheerfully bring out your parameters to solve this question so with all of these let's go over to the next practice question which is question number three okay guys let's get into the next practice question which is question number three and it says when heat is absorbed during a chemical reaction the reaction is said to be now please take note whenever heat is absorbed in a reaction that reaction is an endothermic reaction but if it was released that reaction is an exothermic reaction what becomes the answer to this question option d very easy next question brass and bronze are both metallic alloys yes they are both metallic alloys what are alloys alloys are like they are mixtures okay that is formed by a metal and any other elements do you understand so brass and bronze are metallic alloys so which of the following constant is common to both of them now there is an element that is common to both brass and bronze it is copper so specifically if you are asked what are the components of brass what are the components of bronze for br you already know that copper is a is a base metal copper is very important in both of them okay i believe you can see the board and what becomes the other member for brass that actually forms brass so it is actually zinc whereby for bronze it is tin sn do you understand so the component of brass is copper and zinc component of bronze is copper and tin do you understand so this must be noted so let's get into the next practice question which is question number five okay guys question number five says the formula of a compound in a reaction between a trivalent metal m and a tetravalent non-metal x is what very easy see there are two elements here m and also x we were told that the metal m is what trivalent meaning that the valency meaning that the charge is tri three and metals are all positively charged so the charge is plus three do you understand whereby the for this other one this one is tetravalent meaning that and non-metals are negatively charged so tetra tetra means four so it's minus four do you understand so this must be noted so the next thing we do how is compound formed compounds are formed by the combination of their charges okay for metal m which is three plus it will pass it over to the other guy which is x and x uh, charge will pass over to the other guy which is m so this is what i mean so m will come here the charge whereby x will come here so meaning that we are having m 
So 4 is going to come down. We are forming a compound whereby for M, pass it over to 3. Pass it over to X, rather. So X becomes 3. So what becomes the formula of this compound is M for X3. Very easy. Let's check the option. Okay, option C becomes the answer to this question very easy so let's get into the next practice question which is production of h2so4 industrially is by what process it is called the contact process this must be noted the contact process and number seven says electrolysis of alumina to produce aluminium is by a process called the Hall's process Hall's process whereby number eight says the chemical formula of plasters of paris is this Plasters of Paris chemical formula is CaSO4 dot FH2O. Please take note, Plasters of Paris, this is the chemical formula. Plasters of Paris is like a cast plaster that is used for treating broken bones. This must be noted. Whereby for question number nine, it says, dash alloy is used to make cutlery and surgical instrument. It's called the, the stainless steel alloy. Okay, the stainless steel steel alloy whereby for question number 10 is says delta h is what delta h is called enthalpy change okay delta h is enthalpy change and enthalpy change has to do with the heat or, or, or content of a reaction between the product side of that reaction and also the reactant side of that reaction that's enthalpy change delta h do you understand that's for question number 10 okay guys so if you find this video lesson helpful do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these lessons with your friends it is very important because all of these questions they are questions that you may likely see in the jam exam so pay attention to everything explained here and also share these videos with your friends thanks for watching